Well, hello and welcome to today's video. Today we're looking at the Brother MFCJ four six two zero DW. We will turn the printer on. And the message the machine is giving is ink absorber pad full. This customer has rung up. They've let it go all the way to the very end. This machine has been saying for several months to the customer, ink absorber replacement soon. And the customer's reached to the end where the printer no longer prints and has completely locked up and that's when I've received the phone call we urgently need our printer fixed it now no longer works despite them being given a warning for several months that they need to do something about it so to get this repair underway we first need to turn the printer off We then need to unplug the power cord and we're going to begin by opening the clamshell. Now over here on the left hand side you have a lever here which goes up into this section up in here. This customer's obviously already had a hack at it and they've broken this arm. So what we will have to be doing is we will have to be very careful not to swing this top cover and to break the cables at the back up here. So we need to remove this cover here. And we need to remove all these cables. So we will start by this one. You grab it under, put the finger on top, and pull. Then we take it out from under and put it away. The next one we need to remove is the blue cable. Then we need to remove the red cable and the white cable and then we need to remove this cable you grab both sides and pull equal amount of pressure on both sides of the cables you then want to grab this clip and carefully Bring this assembly up. So this here is the whole cable assembly here for the top scanner piece. So you'll need to get a Phillips head screwdriver and undo this screw here. So we remove this screw and then we 
grab this hall piece. We tip the scanner unit backwards and then down here you can simply slide it backwards like so. Same over on the other side over here and then we can simply lift the entire scanner assembly away. And then we'll just leave that there. Alright, so we've separated the scanner unit down there from the whole printer assembly. Uh, put that arm back down. We now need to move on to removing these screws here, 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 here. A screw down there. And the screw over here. Now we're having a bit of a rush on these printers for this problem at the moment because it's just been raining continuously here in Australia for the past four to five months on and off. The ink absorber in this machine is designed to evaporate the water content out of the ink to make the ink absorber last quite a long period of time and the problem is because we've had all this rain for the past five months the water is not evaporating out of the ink absorber pad and so it's throwing up the error message saying it's time to replace the waste absorber Alright, so that should be all the screws, then just want to grab it and just carefully lift, we need to undo this, carefully just lift the inner cover off. Oh, incidentally if there is a plug here in the external line remove that plug it just simply pulls out and then you can lift the cover up and drag it away so in this machine the machine pumps the waste upwards so this is the waste absorber here built into the waste absorber is the sponge that absorbs all the waste ink and they have built into the cover which is going to be very difficult to show on camera but you'll see it when you pull your printer apart there are holes so on this machine the ink gets pumped into here and here goes along this channel all the way along here into this point where there are perforated holes in the top sealing plastic that's the perforated holes are there deliberately uh, to allow the water content in the waste ink to evaporate out and that makes this pad last quite a number of years but the problem is lately because it's so wet at the moment because it's constantly raining is the evaporation is not happening here and it's allowing the waste to travel all the way along it has to go through this connecting pad here it then joins this pad 
and as the ink marches its way along all the way up it then reaches the sensor and this is the sensor which tells it that the pad is full it's now time to change this pad and the printer stops printing so what we've got to do is we need to unplug the pad from the sensor here Carefully pry it up, and then we've disconnected that. Then we can simply unravel it. And lift this tab up here, and then the waste unit simply comes up and it clips down in here on this section. Now the waste unit tubes are different sizes deliberately. One carries the coloured ink, the other one carries the black waste ink. So you carefully have to pry this off without splitting or damaging the tube. It's that one. That one and then this is our waste unit so what you can do is you can buy these waste units um, we're not going to supply them on our website because we just choose to clean them out and reuse them they're very easy to clean out and reuse and um, uh, or what you can do is you can cut holes into the back of your printer put the ink lines out through it and then plug the ink lines into, I don't know, a jar or a uh, Tupperware container and that way you never have to replace this part or deal with it anymore because you're pumping the waste ink directly into um, some external reservoir uh, to collect the waste. Alright, so how do we uh, repair this unit to reuse it? Well, simple. We pull the sensor out, it has a little hole in it here which goes down to the notch down here in the plastic. And we're simply just going to rinse this under a tap, a hot tap to get all the ink off of it. And then we're just going to put it aside to dry for a while. At the same time we're going to get a knife and we're going to Simply cut a line down here, a line down here, and maybe cut up here if we can't get the sponge out. And then you simply take the sponge out, rinse it in a sink. It takes a good 10 minutes to rinse all the waste ink out of the sponge. Then we wring the sponge out, put it aside, and just let it dry for a while. Um, uh, yeah, so the best way I've found of drying the sponge is just put it on the dashboard of your car, park the car in the sun. Within about an hour, the sponge is usually dead dry and ready to go back in. So we'll get on to cutting this and repairing this now. Alright, so we're just simply going to take the scissors. And we will cut a line. And then we'll cut a line down here with the scissors. And then we will just simply grab the sponge. 
Now the sponge is three separate layers all sandwiched together. So grab that. And we simply pull that out. Now this is the top row. The top layer. So the second layer down it forms a bit of a uh, reservoir down in here to enable when the ink comes in it simply drops in here and gets evenly absorbed through the three layers of sponge. Okay, so that's the second layer sponge, and then you've got the bottom layer sponge down here. That's the bottom layer sponge. Over here you have this sponge. That sponge has cuts on the underside of it, like so. And that just slows down the flow of the waste ink as it's marching its way to the sensor which lives here. You have this small little cutout sponge, like so. And then you have the joining sponge here. This one, this little joiner sponge, and that connects to the main absorbing sponge over here. It's all about slowing the progression of the ink making its way to the sensor. So now we just simply turn on the tap. We wash the sensor off. You have to get all of the ink that's been absorbed into the circuit board out. And then we just simply just keep rinsing the sponges until the ink stops flowing out of it. And then we rinse out the uh, cradle. So as you can see, the quick way is simply to buy a waste box and stick it on. Uh, we do it this way because we need to have this printer repaired within 24 hours to satisfy this particular customer. And we know the printer will be fine for the next four to five years. As I have done this several hundreds of times before. Okay, so we've pretty much got all the ink out of that, so put that aside and let it dry. And then we'll just keep working on the um, sponges, and you just keep rinsing them until the ink just simply stops coming out. I'll pause the video and then I'll come back once I'm ready to go on to the next step. 
All right, so we've finished rinsing these sponges out and they're now clean and free of all ink. I'm now, because the rain just won't let up here and everything is just so wet at the moment, I've just got them sitting on top of a hot plate, uh, just on top of the stove and we're just getting some heat into these sponges just to let them dry out. So these won't take very long to dry out. I'll just uh, leave them on there for a bit. We don't want to overheat them because they are made of a plastic fiber. And melting them would be the worst thing possible that we could do. So we'll just uh, let that keep that on that, that on a really low heat and we'll let that dry out for about 10 minutes. All right, so we've now got our bone dry pieces of sponge. All the pieces here. And it's just simply a matter of putting it back together in the plastic case. So we will start off with uh, this piece. And it's just a matter of matching the shapes as to the way they were originally in it. So this one goes around like so. Like that. The um, joining piece here goes in like so. And then we have uh, this piece which then goes in with the perforations downside and the notch that pokes through here to touch the, um, the sensor. So it simply goes in like that. There is a cut in the sponge. there so the idea is once the ink comes in here goes all the way up here and around it hits this piece of sponge and that makes this piece of sponge um, expand and then this piece of sponge touches this piece of sponge and then starts to make the ink get drawn through all the way up to the sensor. And the sensor simply get that into focus. There we go. Uh, it simply just clicks in like so. Into that little notch there. Alright, don't even have to push it that hard, it just simply goes in. Like that. Like so. And then we have our three sponges for up here. So that's the top one. That's the middle, that's the bottom. Just a matter of looking out that goes that way. Now we don't want to cut all the way along on this plastic cover. Because if you cut all the way along when the ink comes in. So if you've cut it probably any further than here, if you cut it all the way along here when the ink comes in, it will simply just overflow out over the side here and then all through the printer and damage the printer, which is what we're trying to avoid. Now 
and then just get a bit of a pen to push it over all the way to the very end up here. I'll just try a screwdriver. Then we move on to the middle bit. And then we put the top bit in, which goes that way, and we are pretty much done. Okay, so that's now all in, we pull the plastic bits out. Okay, so we've got our plastic covers there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get some packing tape. And we are going to seal this side up. But what we're going to do is we're going to leave this side open just to encourage evaporation of the water out of the uh, the waste sponge. All right, and that waste unit's now ready to go back in the printer. There. 
All right, so it's just a matter of now clipping it back in. Putting the ink lines inside. And plugging them back in. Make sure over here, it's there. And we run the cable and we plug it into the socket. Like so. Alright, so the next step, now that we've got all the waste done, um, if you are a regular customer of mine and you buy your cartridges from me, uh, we would check this supercapacitor here to see if it's functioning. Um, so this supercapacitor down here that little device there, it's responsible for the power button on the front of the machine allowing the printer to turn off and on. When this part fails, the machine no longer, when you're pushing the power button, turns on, the machine stays completely dead. So while we're here and we've got the printer apart, it's just simply a case of Putting one lead onto a grounding surface. And we're just going to measure both sides of the supercapacitor to see if there is a... that capacitor is functioning and that it's holding a charge. Alright, so if your capacitor is functioning, you will see around a 3, three volt charge there on the capacitor. So this one's at 2.8. So that capacitor is still working perfectly okay. Uh, so there is absolutely no need for me to replace this part while we are in here and we've got the printer pulled apart so we will leave that part in there and that will keep functioning uh, when you call us up to replace if you call us out to uh, repair your printer for you to do this uh, we automatically just check to see if this is okay while we're in here at the same time um, all right so it's just a matter now of putting the unit back together which is just a reverse of what came at the very beginning so we simply take the cover stick it back on uh, we then put all the screws in from each of the screw sockets Alright, so we have finished putting all the screws back in all the way along. 
and up the backs. And now it's a case of putting the rear cover back on. Sorry, the ADF scanner. So we now grab the scanner, slot it in. So, and then we'll bring the unit down, and then it's a case of taking the arm here, and flipping it back in up the top, we can't because the customer has broken it on this machine, so we will just let it sit there holding it for us while we plug in all the cables, this one has to clip down like so. We need to put a screw into the earth lead here. All right, so we've got our earth lead screwed in and then it's just a matter of grabbing the ribbon cable. You grab it like this and you carefully push it down. like so and we take and we just simply match the colors up to on all the plugs because they're conveniently all a different color And before you freak out, yes, that red plug stays unplugged. It's there for testing purposes back at the factory. We take this and we hook it under. So, and then we take our cover plate, you have to stick this notch in first down here. And that's it, it's, uh, you'd think you're done yet, but you're actually still not done. So now we will plug the printer in. Turn the unit on. And now you actually have to tell the machine that it has a new waste unit in it. because it will still display the ink absorber, absorber pull ink absorber pad full message so we do this you hold down the home button it goes into this menu uh, it gives you the page count so this printer has only managed to do 7,129 pages before that pad became full. You then hold down this section, goes to the secret menu, and then you have to hit, and you have to do it quite quickly, asterisk 2864 hash. So asterisk 2864 we don't have to hit the hash on this one. So now it's in machine error at 46. 
So then what we have to do is we have to tap in 80. That takes us to the reset section. And then it's just a matter of hitting the left arrow. And then we'd keep scrolling. Probably should have done the up arrow. <laughs> and we stop when we reach purge. So we're on purge now. So we on purge we get that into focus press the this arrow we have to get to the numbers and then you have to type in two seven eight three to reset this number And you would have saw, seen there, if you just go back and pause the video, that would reset to zero, zero. We then want to press the left arrow. And press the down arrow. Oh, hang on. So we will then go back and type in 80 again. That takes us back to this. This Then we'll hit that arrow. This time we'll choose the up arrow. And there we will confirm that the purge is on zero, zero, zero. Purge is on zero, zero, zero. So if we then hit the stop key. We hit stop again. We go back to the numbers and we hit 99. That takes us out of service mode. The machine then reboots. And with any luck, the machine should be fully functional now, unless there is another problem that the customer has not told us that the machine has. And there we have it, the machine's all fixed. So now we will just go and do a test. Roof print quality, check print quality, start. And there we go, this printer's got a pretty good print quality, everything looks good. There's a bit of colour mixing going on here, which will simply require a bit of a manual clean out inside. Uh, but that's pretty much it for this video, about um, fixing the ink pad absorber full message. Uh, so if this has helped you out, the tip link is below in the description. 
if you've been able to solve your problem with the help of my video and you want to say thanks uh, any small amount of money is appreciated uh, to feed my coffee addiction um, if you've got any other uh, questions you can just simply leave a message in the comment and I'll reply when I can if you're local to the Brisbane or Gold Coast area and you have had this happen to your printer and you don't want to deal with it, you would just simply like to pay me some money to come out and do it for you. Uh, just follow the uh, link below to my website, fixitfastelectronics.com uh, and uh, just contact me through there by the mobile phone number or simply send me a text message and I'll get back to you. Uh, I can do this job at your place but it is quite messy. We prefer to pick the machine up, fix it and return it to you. Um, if you need inks for one of these printers we have plenty in stock always available for delivery. Um, and that is it for today. Thanks for watching.